In the realm of classic adaptations, few films hold the timeless charm and enduring appeal of the 1940 rendition of Pride and Prejudice. Bringing Jane Austen's beloved novel to life, the cinematic gem captivates audiences with its portrayal of societal intricacies, romantic entanglements, and the indomitable spirit of its characters. The movie delves into the complexities of human nature, navigating the delicate balance between pride and perception, prejudice, and truth. Amongst the array of captivating performances, one might ponder which character resonates the most, drawing us into their world. Was it Elizabeth Bennet's unwavering spirit, Mr. Darcy's enigmatic allure, or the delightful eccentricities of Mrs. Bennet? Each portrayal adds layers to the narrative, leaving a lasting impression on viewers. This cinematic masterpiece has woven itself into the fabric of many lives, influencing perceptions of love, societal norms, and personal relationships. Its impact often extends beyond the screen, sparking reflections on individual experiences and beliefs. What stands out most vividly in your memory about this adaptation? Was it an unexpected connection to a character, a moment that struck a chord, or perhaps a lasting influence on your perception of romance or society? Share your cherished stories and reflections with us. Your experiences add depth to the enduring legacy of this remarkable film. We're eager to hear your tales and memories in the comments below. Your unique perspective enriches our collective appreciation of this cinematic treasure. In the 1940 movie adaptation of Pride and Prejudice, a notable incident involved Phil Silvers, who was asked to screen test for a vicar role despite his strong New York accent. However, this turned out to be a prank by studio executives. Silvers later recounted this as one of the funniest moments in his career. Another interesting aspect of this film was the collaboration between costume designer Adrian and director Robert Z. Leonard. Adrian suggested setting the movie in a later time period than Jane Austen's original novel, aiming for more opulent costumes than those of Austen's era. Lastly, Marcia Hunt, a cast member, held the distinction of being the last surviving member of the 1940 Pride and Prejudice until her passing in 2022 at the age of 104. Each of these anecdotes provides unique insights into the production and legacy of the 1940 adaptation of Pride and Prejudice, offering glimpses into behind-the-scenes dynamics and the enduring impact on its cast members. This film stirred remarkable interest in Jane Austen's pride and prejudice. Upon its release, the novel saw a surge in popularity, with at least five new editions printed to coincide with the movie. Within a decade, the book had undergone an astonishing 21 printings. This cinematic adaptation significantly contributed to the widespread appeal and renewed attention the novel received, solidifying its place in literary acclaim. The 1940 movie adaptation of Pride and Prejudice brought interesting casting considerations. Clark Gable was the studio's initial pick for the role of Darcy. However, the part eventually went to Lawrence Olivier due to contractual conflicts. Additionally, Greer Garson, aged 36 during filming, portrayed Elizabeth, a character about half her age in Jane Austen's novel. This casting decision sparked discussions about the adaptation's interpretation. Furthermore, the film highlighted economic differences, depicting Mr. Bingley's annual income of £5,000 sterling, equivalent to a substantial sum in today's currency. These casting choices and the portrayal of wealth added layers to the film's dynamics and storytelling, enriching the on-screen portrayal of Austen's beloved characters. The 1940 movie adaptation of Pride and Prejudice faced an unexpected turn during its production. Despite plans for a Technicolor filming, the scarcity of film reels led to an unconventional shift to black and white. This deviation from the original vision, attributed to producer David O. Selznick utilizing all available Technicolor film for Gone with the Wind, presented a challenge to the filmmakers. Consequently, the lavish sets and opulent costumes, initially intended for vibrant display, were captured in monochrome. This alteration, while unexpected, didn't deter the film's portrayal of the classic Austin narrative, highlighting the resilience of the production team in adapting to unforeseen constraints. Sir Lawrence Olivier, despite his eventual acclaim, harbored reservations about the 1940 adaptation of Pride and Prejudice. He foresaw a cinematic flop, critiquing the absence of key scenes and an undue emphasis on costumes over acting. 
Oliver's skepticism, however, proved unfounded as the film went on to shape the public's perception of Jane Austen's classic. The divergence from his expectations and the movie's ultimate success offer a fascinating lens into the unpredictable nature of film production and audience reception. In 1936, MGM secured the rights to Helen Jerome's stage adaptation of Pride and Prejudice, paying a hefty sum of $50,000. This move was orchestrated by Irving Thalberg, acting on behalf of the studio. Notably, Jane Austen's original novel had already entered the public domain by then, making Jerome's work the sole copyrighted version. The decision to acquire the rights was influenced by Harpo Marx, a friend of Thalberg, who suggested the purchase after attending Jerome's play. The movie's advertising strategy took an interesting turn, aligning with the style of screwball comedies. The campaign issued a playful warning, Bachelors Beware. Five gorgeous beauties are on a madcap manhunt. This unconventional approach added a layer of intrigue to the film, setting it apart from conventional period dramas. While the movie itself saw success, one of its key players, Sir Lawrence Olivier, took a significant hiatus from Hollywood after a prosperous two years. Olivier, following the 1940 Pride and Prejudice, decided to step away from Hollywood for 12 years. During this time, he returned to England, engaging in both the movie and stage industries, and spent quality time with his new bride, Vivian Lee. These behind-the-scenes decisions and anecdotes contribute to the unique narrative surrounding the 1940 adaptation of Pride and Prejudice, showcasing the intriguing blend of business acumen, marketing strategies, and the personal choices of the actors involved. Vivian Lee, despite her talents, missed the chance to portray Elizabeth Bennet in the 1940 adaptation of Pride and Prejudice. The role went to Greer Garson, sparking discussions about casting choices. This decision, however, didn't hinder the film's success. Notably, Cedric Gibbons and Paul Gross's art direction in the movie marked the first of their three Academy Award wins, showcasing their significant contribution to the film's visual appeal. This artistic achievement added another layer to the movie's legacy, emphasizing the talent behind the scenes that contributed to the overall success of the 1940 Pride and Prejudice. The interplay between casting decisions and the recognition of artistic accomplishments offers a nuanced perspective on the film's enduring impact. As we bid adieu to the enchanting world of 1940's Pride and Prejudice, let the echoes of elegance and wit linger in the corridors of your thoughts. The dance of dialogue and the tapestry of manners may fade from the screen, but their resonance remains etched in the recesses of your cinematic soul. Take a moment to traverse the ballrooms of your own memories. How did the iconic characters of Elizabeth Bennet and Mr. Darcy waltz into your life? Were you swept away by the grace of their courtship or did the razor-sharp banter carve a niche in your heart? Perhaps the lush cinematography painted a portrait of an era that stirred something within you. Now, as the credits roll, the story continues in the theater of your mind. Share with us the verses of your personal symphony inspired by this cinematic masterpiece. What chapters of pride and prejudice resonate most profoundly with your story? Is it the timeless allure of love overcoming societal expectations, or the nuances of characters etched with the quill of authenticity. In the grand tapestry of classic cinema, each viewer weaves their unique thread. Your reflections are the brush strokes that breathe life into the celluloid canvas. So, let your voice join this harmonious chorus of admiration, for in your thoughts, the spirit of pride and prejudice finds perpetual renewal. Thank you for embarking on this cinematic journey where past and present converge in the tapestry of storytelling. Your time and thoughts are treasured gems in the trove of shared experiences. Wishing you countless more moments of cinematic reverie.